Oh, that's a good idea. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jada and Stitches Show. On today's quick tip, we're going to talk about how you find the ends, so both ends, on a skein of yarn. I've had a couple questions actually about this, and it's not always obvious where the ends of a skein are, and not always obvious which end you should be crocheting from. So I thought today I would show you two examples, one of a ball that's well wrapped and labeled, and another one that isn't necessarily labeled, but there's a trick to finding out which end you should be trying to pull from when you're looking for the inside end of the skein. This is a ball of Red Heart Super Saver. It's a large skein of yarn and it's readily available just about everywhere here in Canada and the US. Now, this is something really cool that this uh, yarn company has done for quite a while now. They've got a little legend on their label that actually tells you which end of the skein you'll find the two ends of, of the yarn. So for example, a side, this side over here, shows them pulling the yarn end out because it's usually tucked into the, both sides will be tucked into the ends. This makes it better for transport and less likely to unravel when it's being stocked in the store. And if you pull this end, it will be the end that is outside of the yarn. So for example, here it is. And you can see that it's on the outside of the yarn. So if I play with it a little bit, it's pulling underneath the label. So this is the outside end. Generally, this is not the end you want to crochet from, and there's a reason for that. Your skein will bounce and flop and tumble around, and it will you'll find yourself sort of yanking up on it to give yourself slack so that you can keep working. So that's not necessarily the best place to start. Plus, if you don't have it in a bowl or a bag, it's liable to get wound up with other skeins that are unraveling next to you, or it'll just pick up whatever's on the carpet, and that can mean a lot of fluff. So you don't want to do that. What you do want is the inside end. The other half of this legend shows you the B side. And this B side shows the end being pulled from the very middle inside of the skein. So if I put my fingers over here and fill around a little bit, a really well wrapped skein of yarn actually has the end sitting out already. So if I pull this, the whole thing's gonna start to unravel. It might be a little stiff at first, so don't be surprised if there's a little bit of tugging or it's a bit, it tightens up or something around one of the inside loops. Just gently pull it out and gently kind of tug it apart and it won't usually knot up on you. So just a little bit of gentle tugging and then once it loosens up on the inside, you can just plunk it down on whatever surface you're working from and it will unravel nice and neatly from the inside out until you're done the entire skein. Uh, in particular, I've noticed that Red Heart does that really, really well, and I don't usually have too much trouble with Red Heart, um, or well-wrapped acrylic skeins in general. Because this yarn is sort of smooth and it's tightly, um, tightly spun, it doesn't usually kind of knot up with itself, um, and uh, just makes for sort of easier crocheting. <laughs> of another ball of yarn that is well spun. This is a ball of Bernay Satine. Now, Bernay um, doesn't have the same kind of legend on their label that shows you sort of what end is what, but there's a really nifty trick you can try to figure out where the outside end is, and wherever the outside end has been tucked into, you know that the inside end is on the opposite side. So for example, if I take a look at this end, I don't see any strings obviously going into it. But if I take a look at this end, there's obviously a string tucked into the end. So if I pull that, then there's the end. Once again, I know that this is the outside end of the string of the skein because when I yank up on it, it sort of messes with the label and it sort of tugs up on the label. So I know that is not the end that I want to crochet from. Now the end is not readily visible here on the other side. So that means I've got to like stick my thumb and my forefinger in there and root around and see if I can find it. 
This is where it can get complicated. Now, if I do this, I actually feel a little, oh, look there, there's the end. So lucky me, <laughs> this end was right out top. This was also a well-spun skein of yarn and I just pull on it, pull a little, pull out a little bit of the knot that kind of comes with it. And now this will unravel nice and easy, especially since this is that sort of slippery satin kind of yarn. I love this yarn too, um, especially because it unravels so easily out of the skein. Now, you may be saying, well, that's all very well and good, Jada, but I found this skein of yarn that was really pretty and it was this kind of cool yarn and I bought it and I brought it home and I couldn't find the inside of it. Or I pulled and I yanked and it was coming out, the guts of the ball were all over the floor and the cat took it off. And Yeah, I've had those balls too and they're very frustrating. But I say again, if you find the outside one, put it aside, make note of which end it kind of came out of and put focus all of the efforts on the other end. So you may have to pull out the whole center of the skein of yarn and if it comes out, that's okay. Put the ball to one side, take the middle part of the skein and do the same thing. Look in the same end and you will probably find the end. If you don't, you can just pick up the end that attaches to the rest of the skein and then just very gracefully <laughs> pull it apart. And once you have that end, put it aside and start very loosely rolling from the end of the yarn that's still attached to the bulk of the skein. That way, when you start crocheting, it'll just unravel from the bit that you rewound and then pull the rest out of the skein. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> but I'll show you once again. So here is the end of the skein. That's the outside end. I've got quite a lot of slack on it. I don't want that to get tangled with the inside end. So I'm going to wrap that up and just tuck it under the label. So here's my end, I'm just gonna tuck it under the label. Now I've pulled out a significant amount of yarn from the inside. Let's say there was like just a ton of it because I had to pull out half the middle of the, of the ball at the same time. I look for the end by pulling the part of the yarn that's closest to the bulk of the skein gently through my hands, looking all the while, and then, oh, there it is. Once I find the end, I'm literally gonna drape it somewhere far away. I'm gonna go back to the skein, and I'm gonna take the end that's still attached to the skein and just very loosely roll up the rest of the yarn around my fingers, just as if you were going to roll a new ball of yarn, but nice and loose because it doesn't have to be tight because you're not putting it away. If you got a tremendous amount, I have done this before in the past and then tucked the whole thing back into the middle of the ball of yarn, but chances are if you're about to crochet, you're probably gonna go through more of this than you think. So I'm just gonna loosely wrap it around my fingers. And once I have enough left, I'm just gonna take it off, leave it on the table next to my ball of yarn, grab my hand, and start crocheting. And as I work, this will unravel nice and neatly, and then the rest of it will come out from the center of the ball. So, there you go. I hope that quick tip helped you find both ends and also how to best unravel from the inside of the skein. If you don't think, if you think you're going to use the whole ball and you don't want to fuss with the inside, take the label off and it's best if you put a small skein in a bowl so that while it's bouncing around, it doesn't get dirty. So you can do that too, but if you want it to sort of stay stable and you don't mind, you know, doing a little hunting, then I recommend taking the end from the inside of the skein and doing your crocheting from there. That is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Jaden Stitches Show, and we will see you again soon for another quick tip or tutorial or who knows what. We don't. <laughs> See you soon. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Next.